Let's talk philosophy. What's up guys and welcome to another video. First, you know, excuse the outfit. I got a wedding that I'm getting ready to go to and uh, this is one of the only times of my week that I've been able to squeeze in filming some content. So you get me dressed up a little bit before I put my suit and tie and all on, but welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm wanting us to talk about philosophy. Now, as much as I'd like for us to talk about, you know, Kierkegaard or Plato or, or you know, just philosophy in general, today we're going to be talking about my training philosophy, especially regarding weightlifting. So what is a training philosophy? Essentially, just kind of my fumbling way of explaining it is a training philosophy is your approach to getting accomplished what it is you want to get accomplished when it comes to your training. It includes some literal actual science, it includes a little bit of bro science, it includes some of your own flavor sprinkled in. It's just how you as an individual are able to accomplish what it is you want to get done and how you think you can best go about doing that. So uh, for example, do you think it's better to train in the morning or train at night? Is it better to do a push-pull lower split or a full body split? Is it better to train every day of the week? Is it better to just train three or four days a week? Uh, none of them are necessarily wrong. It's just kind of your personal approach to your fitness goals and what it is you're trying to accomplish. Now, I'm no doctor. Be sure to talk about some of this uh, training philosophy with someone who actually knows what they're talking about. And there's tons of stuff that you can find online. My training philosophy is always changing, always adapting, and I think a good training philosophy will. A lot of his base or training philosophies off people will see in, on YouTube, uh, Jeff Nippert or a guy who just passed away, John Meadows, uh, will see these YouTube videos of these guys explaining how it is they're doing, what it is they're doing, why they do it the way they do it. And we start to implement the little things that we're picking up from them on YouTube videos, forums, books, what have you into our workout regimen and that's all shifting and tailoring our training philosophy to best fit what it is we're trying to do. I personally like trying to nitpick a little bit and, and pull from a bunch of different sources until I have my own personalized training philosophy. Now, many of you have seen the video that I uh, recorded a couple months ago now, and uh, in the beginning of the year, I tested my one rep max, and then four months later, again, tested my one rep max, and ended up with abysmal results, ended up not making any progress, so this forced me to personally go back and look at my training philosophy, try and figure out what went wrong, what went right, what did we need to change, what could we keep, and uh, so that's where a lot of this has come from is just after a really, really bad progression over four months, uh, really addressing that, digging in deep, saying, all right, how is it that I can get from point A to point B? I've done some research, I've done some inside, just kind of my own personal preference. And instead of just following a plan that someone else put together, following a plan, but also sprinkling in my own components to it. First, I want us to talk about training splits. Now, a training split is how often, I guess you could say, you work the different parts of your body and the, the system that you have for going about training each of those body parts. So a few examples of these are full body split and upper lower split. I just met a guy who does a front back split. So one day he'll work his chest, I think it's bicep, quads, and then the next day he'll work his hamstrings, glutes, you know, back and shoulder and bicep. So, so that I'd never heard of that one, but I personally do a push pull lower split. This means one day I'll focus on the push muscles, that's your chest, shoulder, tricep. Then I'll focus on my leg muscles, so that's my quad, my hamstring, my glutes, and my calves. And then I'll focus on a pull day on my back and bicep especially. For me, this split is ideal because it allows me to get enough volume into each of the major muscle groups. I feel like on a full body workout, I'm barely able to touch each of the muscle groups, and same thing with an upper lower split. So for me, I like the push-pull lower split. I'm in the gym three times a week and I'm able to give enough emphasis onto each of the muscle groups. Next, I want to talk about reps and sets. Now, I've been messing around with a bunch of different ways of doing this and at the moment what I've come to is doing a lot of really high rep work. I try to get that hypertrophy. For each muscle group, I'll set up three exercises and include at least one accessory muscle in there, not including lower back and core. Every workout I try and hit at least one lower back and one core exercise 
uh, in the rotation, in the workout. Each lift day, I make sure to incorporate at least one heavy compound lift that I do at a five by five. So that could be bench press on Monday, on press day, on leg day, I do deadlift. And then on pull day, I actually go and do a back squat. That way I'm not trying to overlap my deadlift and back squat in the same workout. So for example, on a Monday, which is a push day, I'll go in and I'll do the compound lift first. So I'll do my five by five bench press. And then after that, I'll do a tricep workout and then a shoulder exercise and then cycle back through chest, shoulder, tricep, chest, shoulder, tricep. So I've hit each of those muscle groups three times. Now after the heavy compound lift, all my exercises after I do 15 reps. So three or four sets of 15. Now this is a lot higher than I'm used to doing. I used to shoot for kind of that eight to 12 range, but a couple months ago, someone showed me a video of a bodybuilder and he said he never does less than 15. So I said, I'll go ahead and try bumping up to 15 and see if I see any progress and improvement in that. And I mean, so far I've, I've seen at least a little bit of improvement in my training by doing the 15 reps. Now these 15 reps, I'm not just sitting there grinding out 15 straight. The first 10 in the set of 15 are slow and steady. I'm doing a skull crusher, you know, I'm bringing it down and trying to explode up. I mean, not recklessly fast, but with some speed. And then the last five, I go much slower in there. And it, you should really be struggling by your third or fourth set of 15 to hit those last five in the set of 15. So I don't know if any of that made any sense, but essentially each workout day has one heavy compound lift and the rest of it are three or four sets of 15. Now at the moment, I begin my workout with the heavy compound lift. Now I recommend for most people, you know, just common sense to warm up. If you're coming in just after waking up, if you haven't warmed up at all, you need to make sure you're doing a warm up, especially if you're going into a heavy compound lift. Now for me personally, a lot of times by the time I get to the gym to train, I've already run. Sometimes I've even swam by then. I've done a calisthenic workout. So uh, my body's already been warmed up. So when I get to the gym, I don't need to warm up again. But usually I personally don't spend a lot of time warming up in the gym because I've already done that elsewhere. But I start out my workout with the heavy compound five by five. I'll then cycle through and hit the muscle groups in either tandem or on a push day, it's three exercises, so in a circuit, in a rotation. So on a leg day, I'll do deadlifts, so that's hamstring dominated. Then I'll do quad work, and then I'll go back and do hamstring, and then I'll do a quad work. So we're kind of going back and forth addressing the muscles. I do this to give it a little bit of break between the exercises. So instead of doing, you know, a, a heavy deadlift and then seated leg curls and then trying to do some dumbbell Romanian deadlift, this way there's at least an exercise break for each of my muscle groups. Now regarding the kinds of lifts we're hitting, usually I try and, and load the free weights earlier on in the workout. So that's when we're doing our barbell dumbbell work. After that, we go into the cables, and then I try and end with the machine work. Part of this is for safety, you know, I wanna be fresh when I'm lifting, you know, free lifting weights above my head and stuff, so part of it's a safety deal. Another part of it is I just like how it goes. I feel like I have more power in the beginning to use the free weights, and then I like the tension that the machines put. That's just a personal preference. I like the tension the machines put on my muscles there at the end of a workout. I will also, when it comes to kinds of, of exercises that I'm implementing, in there try and make sure I'm hitting the different ways that a muscle can move so for example on the chest I don't want to sit there and just do press work all workout long one exercise will be pressing the next will be more swinging sometimes I'm trying to you know a deep press in there sometimes it's you know pulling up from beneath or pulling in so just trying to work the muscle from the different angles and I don't hit all the angles every workout it's not a perfect science but it's what works for me personally Now when it comes to rest periods, I know different people have different philosophies regarding this. Um, I personally, on the heavy compound lift, I'll try and wait the full two minutes that's recommended. But a lot of times on my phone, I have an app that has a recommended rest period based on the weight and the reps of the exercise. Sometimes it says a minute, sometimes 30 seconds, sometimes, you know, two minutes. But if I get some feeling fresh enough, I'll a lot of times go ahead and just jump into the next set. Or a lot of times it ends up, I'm just waiting enough time for Austin to do his set which sometimes takes a really long time. 
So what would I change? Um, now that it's been another four months of me working under this philosophy, tra this training philosophy and everything, but a few of the things I think I should start implementing is instead of doing the compound lift first thing in the workout, do at least a couple exercises before that. So I'm thinking of moving that further back into the workout after doing some machine work or cable work to get everything warmed up. I think I'd also like to try implementing some kind of burnout or drop set into the workout. Probably do that at the end when I'm doing the machine work. So go in and do as many reps as possible. Drop the weight a little bit. Do it again as many reps as possible, say for four sets and then get a little bit of a break and then go in and do that all over again. And finally, as I said earlier, I'm hoping to start doing my workout more times than just the three days a week. I think that could really help my progress getting into the gym a little bit more. But I've also been, you know, insanely busy, hence doing this recording right before going to a wedding. If we had the time, there's a whole lot more we could go into. We could go into nutrition, recovery, uh, the philosophies regarding all that, philosophies of being a, a hybrid uh, athlete. I think this video has gone on long enough. I'm curious from you guys, kind of who are your fitness icons? You know, who do you look at and say, I want to train like them? How do you approach your lifting regimen? Do you do any lifting or do you just say, nah, I just want to do the body weight work? But I, I'm always curious. I'm always trying to learn, you know, so I'm, I'm really, I'm, I've learned a lot from you guys just in the comments section. So go ahead and hop in the comments. How do you approach your training? What is it you do? How do you set up your workouts? Drop a comment below and let me know. Well, thanks so much guys for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys. I'm always looking to learn. I mean, you guys have been great teachers, so stay safe out there and see you in the next video. Bye.